Welcome, welcome everyone. We have the Final Fantasy Randomizer Marathon, uh, Rando Marathon Winter 2023. This is our, one of our bonus runs that we're doing right here for the week after the marathon. Bomberman Tournament with Daxim Lomt. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Close, Close enough. enough. <laughs> uh, he, he was kind enough to run a uh, Bomberman Tournament slash Harmony of Dissonance combo randomizer in the marathon. We wanted to give him a chance to show off just the Bomberman Tournament part because this game is so cool. Uh, a game that we were just discussing kind of flew under the radar when it was released initially, and now we have it here as a randomizer just but because one of the developers uh, for the randomizers were just like, I kind of like this game, and made a randomizer. So... Before we get into it and let Dax do all that they're going to do for this run with all the time that they need to do it, I want to remind you that this, that this bonus run and the whole of the marathon was in support of the Burned Children's Fund from the South Carolina State Firefighters Association, uh, in association with the Medical University of South Carolina. The Burned Children's Fund provides supplies and care and therapy and needed help for kids that have been in a burn uh, some sort of fire, some sort of burn situation, somewhere where they need medical assistance and help and care. Uh, along with the uh, musk supplies, the, the care, the therapy, they also have the Camp Can Do, which is a camp that they run specifically for kids that have been burned. Uh, so that they can not worry about like other people seeing their burns, their healed burns, their scars, freaking out about it, just being able to be around other kids and enjoy their time together and have fun being kids. Every $600 that we've raised can effectively go to send one kid to camp. And, you know, we, we like to be able to make, break it down in easy numbers like that. So we've already set six. If you're watching this run now or in the future on YouTube and you want to kick a little extra money to the charity, please do. This will be open all the way through until the Summer Marathon 2024. And we do hope that you'll, you know, support this good cause. With the charity stuff out of the way, let's get right over to the run. Uh, Daxum, it is all you right now. Let's see some Bomberman Tournament. Well... Uh, let's get this started. I just need to... Once I hit new game, uh, the timer should start. So let's get started in 3, 2, 1, go! So, uh, as I showed off last week, this is Bomberman Tournament. Uh, this time it's just the Bomberman side. Uh, it gets a little more open and it's much more, uh, Zelda-like. Okay, so I don't have... And also, uh, this is getting to show off a new set, new feature that the rando has added within the last week. Uh, so, before when I was playing Harmony, I had a number at the top that told me how much was in a region. So I could, you know, I, I didn't have to check everything all the time. I could get an idea when someone was cleared. Well, the same is true here. You'll see that number right now, it's a 7. That is the number of uh, what I believe is the major items, which is the Carabons, the... Of, you know, various bomb types, uh, some fetch quest items too, and I am interested to see how it works. I do know already, not every area is gonna have uh, a, a thing in it because of how it's working. Apparently, it's loading like the map, uh, or checking which map is specifically loaded, and buildings are shared between regions, so it doesn't work that well. But for the most part, uh, we're gonna be able to see what it is. That is Sibloon, so I need money immediately. Uh, get comic five. So as you saw, I got a, a comic from one of the first checks. Uh, that is basically the ability to warp to a town that is associated with that comic. In this case, it's uh, the last town. Uh, so I'm out here in the desert, which is honestly in this rando, what happens most of the time. It is very common to be sent to the desert because it's got so many checks immediately. Uh, and that is access to the snow area. And I'm going to tr try to get this wall open. This is not in logic, but uh, I don't want to come back later. And that is Kame King, which is very required. Okay, so I'm also kind of curious if down here is tied to that same number. It is not. Okay. 
There is one item in Theta. Okay, I believe it has to be under the push block here then. So let's travel to Epsilon now and check what's in the shop, what we, our free item here is. Uh, we definitely need money. Did we get Terran? Okay. I am gonna warp to Alpha. So, looking at the shops, we need a good amount of money. Uh, so I'm going to do this walk that gets me another check, but on the way I'm going to be trying to get enemies so I can actually have, you know, money to afford the things I really want. these balloons in this area will cooperate with me. This is just uh, a longer walk that gets to the only other Sphere Zero check. It, this rando actually only starts with three items in the first sphere. So it's kind of common to have to do this anyway. I'm also setting up for a check closer to here that uses that uh, Sabloon that I saw. least buy one of them which given what I saw I am gonna probably pick up Elephon first which is my ability to push and that ooh, okay so Elephon was here in Epsilon and what I just got was Fire Kong which is my remote bombs which is arguably the most useful item in the game <laughs> Not Pterodon. Uh, I have so many more than I'm used to initially. So I can now push. So I'm going to walk and check an item here. And pretty soon I'm going to go back to the desert to get a lot more. Now that I can push. Uh, 
is where I save to be safe. Unfortunate. I was hoping that I would be able to get enough money wa while walking this way to pick up Sabloon. But I can find other time to do that. Especially once I get into one of the bases, I will end up with a lot more money. Just because you kind of get a bunch of all the enemies you have to fight in the bases you progress. Yeah, no. Sabloon. I believe this house down here will heal me, which is always appreciated. I want to be on Fire Kong again. You're going to see me switch to Fire Kong very frequently as... It, it's just going to save so much time compared to anything else. That is my fourth fire that I have. Okay, so going through here, I'm going to have to dodge some enemies that can be kind of scary when I have not that much health. Uh, they're these little demon-like things. I don't, I don't know fully what they're supposed to be, uh, but they get, and there's about to be a lot of tight space, they get really cramped, and they also uh, shoot at me, so it's a, a little bit of a mess to dodge here. Especially this one right here. And he decided to be friendly. Cool. He flew at the perfect time. So I'm going to go talk to this old man. And he's going to hand us, apparently, a tiger. And he wants us to get a step counter for him, which I might find. Okay. We got free item from him. I'm now gonna head back to Zeta or back to Theta and check uh, an item that is locked behind pushing. Because that should be, if I understand this correctly, uh, what the item it's hinting me towards in the area is. Uh, yes, that is a comic. Okay. Fortunately, I need a lot of money this seed. So we're gonna go to... Uh, what's the best way to get money? Uh, Epsilon, I think, actually, is right now. There's a really good spot in the first region, but I just don't have access to it. Okay, that puts me at 114. Okay. 
Okay, I am gonna... Go on a small walk here to get some money, but if I don't get 200, I'm buying Sabloon, and the comic will be delayed a little bit. Which, that's fine. The comic... It, the comic could be Comic 4, which actually just does nothing at this point. So it's not like it is necessarily required. Plus, uh, while the comics get me access to areas, they're not the only way to those areas. I get two more coins. There should be at least one enemy friendly enough to give me that last bit of money. Okay, there we go. There's the money we need. I'm gonna head back to Ida. I'm going to pick up Sabloon, who gives me... It functions like, uh, Pink the Ladder from Zelda 1. It is extremely useful. Uh, it is hard acquired just to get through the last dungeon. It is so nice. And then I'm gonna head over and buy that comic, and that might give us access to either the back half of... Uh, the first area, it could give us uh, the last region that we just can't get to, or it even could do nothing and just give me access to the village that I had uh, walked backwards to earlier. Comic 2, cool. So we have access to all of the regions. Uh, and Comic 2 in particular can get interesting once I beat the first dungeon, as it lets me walk backwards. Uh, thank you very much for the good luck. So this shop has armor. So we don't need that. However, armor is really helpful in this game with how much damage you can take. For example... Uh, we're gonna save here because the frogs are very dangerous. Or at least they are dangerous when grouped up. Nothing in there. That was some more money. Okay. I'm gonna walk. I have two bombs. I'm gonna try to delay doing a puzzle. So, okay, and that is the ability to kick bombs, which is pretty useful overall. Uh, there's a few places here and there where it's useful to have. Uh, there can be things better, though. Three out of there. We're going to go ahead and do this puzzle, then. Shop at that. Okay. So in here, quick puzzle, it's very easy to do. I was just hoping to have two more bombs before I do it because it just makes it a little bit faster.
And there's that puzzle. And of course, that's where a bomb is. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the first town. And I've got a couple things I'm going to pick up here. First, I'm going to walk in here and get my health refilled. By walking this way, I'm going to quickly get to a pushable block that has uh, basically just a free item underneath it. Really nice hidden cave. Easy to get. Really quick check, honestly. Uh, we got a photo, which is our first fetch quest. Uh, we just take that fetch quest to the very first check we ever did right here and we get another fetch quest this seems like it's going to be a running theme uh while i'm here i'm going to run to uh, a little island out past here and check on what is normally fire kong but well it could be anything walk right in this house and I get some more health which honestly for the sake of obviously any kind of you know marathon run I will gladly take some safety items okay so that's been checked over here we get to turn in some bread or that is another fetch quest item it's actually still going However, this fetch quest has two places I get to turn it in. this giant some you know teriyaki just a little bit enough for him to move and then there should be yep a building right here somewhere looking to where we just got you know uh, a heart and we get a step counter which i can turn that in just not immediately but that does mean we got another fetch quest I don't like my options. This is probably the best bet. So I'm going to run all the way to a dungeon entrance that I can't do. Or I'm going to run about halfway, thankfully. I don't need to go the whole path. But there is, once I cross all this lava, there is a shop that is waiting for me. Which is why I haven't immediately bought that armor. And more of these guys. But then... Okay, that's a fetch quest, but I might as well pick it up. So 
business. That is a very nice slime. It was very cooperative. Normally this room you is on cycles with the lava, and if that slime that was at the bottom does not move up, uh, you either have to tank several hits to get through the room quickly, or you just have to wait, and the waiting can take a long time. Thankfully, when you get halfway through, you can actually reset the cycle back to zero by walking in a, a door at the bottom left. But if I go here, I'm going to give turn in the teriyaki again, and I can throw. That is wonderful. Uh, okay, so let, let's go turn in the other fetch quest that I saw. Uh, and that is one my first medal, which is what I need to actually enter the last dungeon. Or one of the, the many items needed, of course. Uh, with what I have left... Let's do this first, and then I'll turn in the step counter. So over here, uh, there's this trapped carabon that... Like, it's trapped, uh, you can't, you know, you need the tree blown up, and normally you're supposed to go into the ocean and get launched out by a whale, uh, but we just throw a bomb and ignore it, and get more fetch quests. Uh, at least these are all kind of early. It can be annoying to have to go back and turn in a fetch quest real late into the seed, when you have that versus an entire dungeon, and the fetch quests sometimes just aren't in great spots. Oh yeah, you're not. I need to go into the woods for this one. So honestly, I kind of don't mind finding these all early. Plus, with Fire Kong, I'm actually able to uh, get some extra money from these balloons easily. And I do want that armor I saw. It'll let me speed up some things here and there, being able to safely, like, take a hit into spikes. And also, it just is convenient to, you know, not be at such low health, or to take more hits and, you know, not be at such low health. I actually, if I thought about it, uh... It's kind of a newer thing I've been doing, is you can throw a bomb over these trees here and make it to where it blows up by the time you get to it once you've gone through the trunk. Uh. So what do you have for me, Louie? Uh, I saw that number tick down, so you got something important. Unagi, that is wonderful. That is access to our first base. Okay, uh... With that in mind, I'm going to go there and put off turning in that step counter I got. So if I go over here, and I switch to Unagi, we get to do... we get to make it rain. With that out of the way... Now I'm going to start climbing the mountain again, except this time when I go to the top, there's going to be a base that I can enter. Uh, since the bases are shuffled, uh, I could see one. I could see ones that are beatable and aren't. And hopefully, I do see one I can beat, because I don't want to have to do this climb multiple times. Uh, the worst case scenario is that... The one thing I'm really hoping to not see, uh, besides uncooperative slimes... Yeah, no. Uh... Had to take the hit because of that. I'm really hoping I don't have to get the step counter item to beat what's here. Uh, but with what I have, honestly, this dungeon up here can be anything. Uh, normally you can get an idea because you tend to get access to a, a base pretty fast. That's where it's just really dense. Uh, but in this case, I have most of the basics already. Normally if I didn't have like a 
something like Sabloon, I would say I would say it's a safe bet I'm not getting the fourth base, or if I didn't have the ability to throw, it's generally not the third one. But with everything I have, it can be any of them, honestly. Uh, however, if it comes to beating a base, I can only beat the first one at the moment. Uh, and to be safe, let's go in here and get a free heal just outside. This is the first base, and there are four items in here. See if you have money. You do. Cool. I actually... Logically, I can't do anything in this base, which is weird to think about. Uh, I can fully clear it out. I don't need... Uh, logical stuff for it. I'm also going to save, because that is... Uh, a little scarier than I wanted, and I do keep the enemies defeated if I save... Fishhook, which is another fetch quest. But yeah, so actually everything in here is not in logic. And I know... I have a good idea what that step counter... What, well, what I'll get when I turn it in. Uh, so I'm probably not going to turn it in until I see... Seedrin, which is... Uh, basically, my... Seedrin is essentially a shield that I can use. Uh, you basically never use it. There's a few rooms where it's good, uh, but otherwise you don't need it. It's always needed logically to beat a seed, but you never actually need it. Uh. Okay. And now I've got so much money I should be fine for the rest of the seed. Uh, I should probably stumble across a 20 somewhere, and that will be, I think, all the money I could need. I guess I could also buy pot big potions in case I ever need them. Okay. Three items left in here. Also, interestingly enough, beating this dungeon will get me access to another one. Uh, because it's going to open up how normally the f second area connects to the first area. I didn't touch it, whatever. Uh. Ooh. I do like starting with a little safe area for me. Normally, walking through the door can be a little dangerous just because of, uh. If these hedgehog things. I'm not quite. I think that's what they're supposed to be. Uh. If they start able to hit you, it can be kind of dangerous. Okay, no. I rotated these around wrong in my head. Let's go to green first. Just in case we get a fusion item. Okay, so that is a bomb type. It's not a bomb type I'm going to end up using the seed. But it 
does matter for getting somewhere. Or it's another item that doesn't really have use other than logic use. Uh, basically, it's that one is aqua bombs, or I think it's called aqua bombs. Might be water bombs. I'm unsure. I think Twilight Princess water bombs work. They're bombs that work in water. And there's only one area to use it for, and you don't end up needing one when going through it. It can be helpful, but I just try not to. But with this, we fuse Pea Fangs, which is essentially our boss key. I need to push yellow. So we have two items left. Uh, so at this point, I know there is an item on the boss, or at least one item is on the boss. Uh, there could actually be both there. We're not going to take the risk. Okay, ooh. Okay, with Hammer and Fire Kong, I have... Pretty much all of the bomb things I could ever want. I'm gonna take a second to save here, just in case. So I switch to P-Fangs to open the door, and I'm gonna switch immediately back to Fire Kong to try to speed this fight up. But yeah, this is, uh, but this is Magnet Bomber. The gimmick of the fight is that he turns into a dragon, and you need to hit the head, uh, three times when it's not on the body. Beautiful. Uh, if you can do something like what I just did, where he gets hit by your bomb and his body exploding, you get a double hit, which can greatly speed up the fight. That was a very clean fight. Uh, I got Comic 4, which doesn't do much, and a Purple Crystal. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so I'm going to warp to Delta. I'm going to pick up that armor that I saw because I just really want it. And I am going to turn in the fishing hook and then immediately go into whatever dungeon is where Magnet Base normally is. Okay. P-Beast. I now have access to three of the four bases immediately. So I might leave this next base. Just I might go in and do basically nothing and just go straight to the other one based on what's in here. Because getting here is really fast. Like, I, I do this one crossover and here I am. Uh, This is pretty with three. I'll come back here in a second. I want to see what's here. If this is Golem, I might delve into it. Uh, also, still three items in the snow area, which... Uh, I'm gonna walk in here to see if the count still sticks. Yes, okay. So two of those items is probably just... One of those items is probably behind... Don't need to worry about any seals hitting me in a cutscene. Uh, this gives us a heart. Okay. So I now I definitely know that there is at least one item behind beating the third dungeon. Speaking of which, that is here. Um... I am gonna spend... How much do I want to see? There's three items here. I'm going to do the front of this, everything that's just in logic, which is not that much. Uh, and then I'm going to leave, because I don't want to spend any more time here than I need to. 
since I'm one item away from being able to just beat it. But yeah. Uh, which, speaking of things, I need to actually get that hammer made into a bomb. Okay, that's an egg. I... Okay. That egg is probably really nice. Uh, that is another one of the fetch quests, and there is a good chance that, that is uh, some kind of major item as well. Uh, I want to say there's a bomb shot over here. Jump. Yes, there's a bomb shot over here. I do not want aqua bombs. I do want power bombs. I do not want landmines. Those are worse than regular bombs, honestly. Okay. So with Fire Kong and Power Bombs, uh, I can pretty much get th anything in my way. Power Bombs make it to where explosions aren't blocked. They always go their full flame leak, uh, distance. And of course, Fire Kong is remote, so I mean, I can just do stuff like that. Uh, here, I want to down because there's just nothing in the way i do need to be careful because i have five fire which is not obviously the biggest it can get but it is still pretty dangerous if i am not careful got any i shouldn't have even waited honestly uh and that is Sharkoon. Okay, that is... Uh... Very nice. That is one of the... No, I think I got two items I need for the third dungeon. Uh... Let's... Turn in... Let's go to Purdy Base. Purdy Base, we are further away from comp being able to compete. Well, no, we're actually the same distance. If we get the item to be pretty base, we also will get access to uh, what we now know is Golem base, which is the uh, last one. Uh, or what is normally the fourth one. Okay, so pretty is a magnet. Oh yeah, it's like this. Uh, oh, that was my controller disconnecting. That was weird. Put that down. Plasma is vanilla. And I need to mark that I now know Golem is in the ocean. Uh, I don't have too much fire for this room. You actually can get, uh, you can actually run into an interesting issue in this room where you have to take a hit from the spikes because you have too much fire. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that works to prevent that issue. I don't know if there actually even really is much we can do, but I don't think we've ever seen it happen. We just know of it happening in theory. Though, on the bright side, you, just, you will always be able to at least tank one spike hit no matter what your equipment is, so it's not like it's locking you out of beating this place. And this room is just so fast. I mean, most rooms in this game are now going to be extremely fast when I have... All the tools that I have at my disposal. Three items here. Let's go north.
This is actually kind of an interesting room. I am not used to having to... Uh... There we go. Word out. Uh, that is... Okay, that is Kaiman. That is the item we needed to be able to beat this base. Uh, so there's two items left here. Do I want to... Okay, so yeah, I know I'm pathing this base. I might not be beating this base. There's actually no, like, big effect on the world at this point this base can give me. So, depending on what I see on my way to the boss, if I get all the items here, I'm just gonna leave... Which, that is really just thanks to the new little hint thing we have, and it is already seeming very helpful. Ah, uh, I thought that would be the one on the left as well. I can just throw this. I thought I pressed up, but oh well. Okay, that is a fire up. I... There's still a chance I don't need to fight the boss for all the items. There is exactly two more checks in here. I will play it safe with damage. Right here we get Kaiman and Peanuts fuse into PC. And we don't have any other fusion materials to turn in here. Okay. So with that cleared, we just run all the way back to that central room where I fought all those skeletons and stuff. Uh, and then going east is where everything else in the dungeon is. We are down to just three locations with four items between them. and hit this to make sure I hit it. And then this room, I don't need to switch to Sibaloon 4, but apparently I am being forgetful enough to might need to do so. Okay. Okay, no, the boss has both items. Or at least it looks like the boss might have both items. Okay, no. That is uni, which is also a hard required. That is what effectively is a shovel. And the shovel is required to get into the last dungeon, of all things. Uh, where's PC? And we're gonna switch to Fire Kong before entering. Uh, this is, I would say, Heart Bomber, or... Her gimmick is she turns into a giant squid thing. Uh, and we need to hit her once to turn her into this, and then we wait for her to uh, have two edges shoot out, and then we bomb the center bomb. And we just do this, I want to say, four or five times. Here we just have to wait for the little blobs to run and kind of hunt us down, but they eventually reform back into the squid form. It's really easy to set a bomb just before the squid forms, so it's just straight to this second section. Uh, and if I was playing a little better, I would have not gotten hit there. 
during this fight, I tend to just wait in the corner furthest from where she got split, because they, she just might not have enough time to actually get to you. Okay. Okay, no, it was just even less times than I thought. There we go. Uh, that is her down. Blue crystal and a disinfectant. Okay. That is almost every fetch quest found, surprisingly. Okay, so now I'm going to work back to Delta real quick. Uh, given what I know, I'm gonna actually run up here and turn in several fetch, turn in a fetch quest and go through a cave and a dark cave, just to see if I can find. I'm looking for Duraco, which is a essentially the lamp, or oh. I. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna head... Oh, what does that mean? Where is... I'm looking for Sharkoon. Okay, so getting Seedron there tells me some interesting logical uh, results. So I thought Seedron was at the... the, the step counter turn-in. Like, that, that makes sense, because uh, that would lead into Magnet Base and everything we else have done is in logic. With that being what we just found, I want to say that the step counter guy actually has what is Comic 1, which might be worth getting. Uh, Comic 1 gets us access to two checks. It technically is just speeding up a process. We can... Cedron also gets us to where Comic 1 is, or gets us to Comic 1 items. I also am not far enough left. I didn't hold down long enough. There we go. This should give me an item here soon. And that is our second medal. At the moment, we just need two medals to actually hit go mode. I'm not gonna get the step counter. I don't think that's worth it. Uh, I'm actually going to go into the ocean to get two checks, and then go into Golem Base. I'm not going to be able to beat Golem Base, but based on how many items there are, I can probably get most of them. It's only locked by the very end. Plus, it is a dungeon where even if I get the materials to fuse in it, I'm not beating it. Just because of how... How the dungeon itself is structured. Most dungeons put their, their fusion thing uh, towards the very end of the dungeon. Or at least, like, Magnets is even just in the middle and... Pretties is such a... Surprisingly, fitting with, like, water... Uh, fitting with water temples being kind of more open paths. That... They don't have an issue of finding their pieces in themselves, uh, but Golem Base, if you don't have the pieces when you go in, it's n almost never worth, like, going all the way back to the beginning. Uh. Interesting. Okay, so we've got Lion Bomb. Go ahead and switch over to everyone's favorite uh, Carabon. I get some more fire. Neat. Okay, so 
So that's only four items in here, which is actually pretty low compared to how many actual uh, checks are in here. We're actually looking at our Carabon roster, it's getting pretty filled. Which is really nice to see. We just tear through that room. Uh... Here we get another crystal. Oh yeah, I, I didn't mention what these crystals are. They're not that noteworthy. They are essentially just dungeon maps. I don't know why crystals are what the, the devs decided to be maps, but it works out. I also definitely don't mind taking that hit there when I can hit the enemies that are probably the most annoying to deal with in the game. There we go. Here we have to walk a specific path to get this chest, because there's actually a lot of uh, pits that you can fall down, for example. Uh, there's another room later on in here that's very similar of having... It has several different solutions, but none of them are... Even the most straightforward one has, I think, three turns in it. Uh, that is not where I wanted to place a bomb. These webs are a tad annoying to deal with. Uh, I'll do a safety save. Actually, no. I'll do this to be safer. I will go and use this large medicine. I can buy one really easily. Here we get to open up this door and get another item. There's Duraco, so we have what is our lamp, and that is the last item we needed to beat the third dungeon. Uh... here it looks like there's nothing but actually if you use uh charcoon there's a staircase in the middle it works you right up to this floor this is pretty much the almost the end of where we're going to be in this dungeon there's what uh three more checks so yeah it looks like the boss is going to have an item here 
Hopefully it's going to be uh, a care bond that we just don't need. Okay, that is our third medal. We are actually a single medal from go mode. Uh, this has been a really fast seed. It does help. The hint, the hint uh, numbers have really helped. They've, you know, let me make some better decisions than I normally could. I'm going to just take some hits in here. I really don't care that much about the damage because I'm going to end up uh, leaving the dungeon really uh, right after this check. Okay, so that's fire up. And just looking at my tracker real quick to confirm. Uh, yes, that's the last check we can get in here. There's two items in the boss. Okay, so we are going to... Uh, First, I want to warp to Gamma real quick. I want to just get this last heart healed. Uh, I'm also going to buy... Not Gamma, I meant to go to Delta. I'm going to heal a heart, or heal my heart up, and I'm also going to buy a... Actually, I don't need to buy a large potion, because the game gave me one before I left. Or let me just make sure I'd rather... Yeah, cool. So I'm going to go... Up here, I'm going to head straight into Plasma Base and just try to uh, pretty much beat it real quick and make, uh, honestly, looking at how much we have left, there's honestly not that much of the game left already. This has been a really fast seed. Uh, and I'm going to beat the third dungeon, pick up the items in Fantasy. And then I should be right about the time I need. I'll pick up the items of fantasy, and that's also going to tell me uh, if another check that's here in the snow area. Or not fantasy. Fantasy is the last dungeon. Uh, palace is what it's called. They're both big castles. Uh, the palace has two of the three remaining checks in the snow area. So if one of those is uh, what is considered junk then I actually have everything I need. I should just be throwing these bombs. I'm trying to be too fancy. Here's the first uh, dark room that I, I just don't need Duraco for. There is... One dark room that I'm going to need Duraco for, because it's a very... Uh, it is the only dark room that has, like, uh, the blocks to blow up, and they can cause issues since I don't have uh, Elecon, which is my ability to walk through blocks. Also, I, as you can see, I have so much fire that I don't really need to care about most things. Uh, okay. We will do that. Cool. And that makes all the path I need. But yeah, this room, if you don't have, if you don't use Duraco, or Elecong, it can be very difficult to navigate, and also making sure the switch to the top right doesn't have a block on it can be slightly annoying. Green crystal. There's only two items in here. Uh, let's pull up my personal map of this place just to make sure I'm right about where it is. Yeah. Uh, this dungeon's kind of interesting with the hint numbers, as it's really, there's a, such a big gap in this dungeon between where the, f like, front items are and back items are, that there's a, like, very distinct, uh, difference, or very distinct, like, how do I put it? You have this massive 
front load of items and then back load of items. So this actually can be a nice one to dive without everything, just being like, okay, I'm going to go in, I'm going to check the all the first floor and the second floor item, and then I'm going to leave, come back later, and kind of I can beat it. Uh, and arguably what I did earlier when I came here is I should have done that, but I'd rather just play, play around mostly staying in logic. Uh, I need to put a bomb in the switch. Having Fire Kong is also is really nice here more than normal. Uh, these switches, they care about having a bomb on them, or really any object, but the bomb's the only one you're ever going to be able to use. And having Fire Kong here, I can just make sure they never blow up, so I don't have to, like, do, you know, some complicated tosses to make sure I save enough time, or in the case of uh, what I was doing on the marathon, where... I had to uh, do boxing glove, or I was doing weird boxing glove stuff to try to put bombs with just enough time. Instead, so I can just place and walk. Speaking of, of course you go down there. Uh, that should deal with that problem. Uh, this room, I just walk down and throw two bombs, and that will just land on the switch. I actually didn't even need to place that bomb. Here is another charcoon room. Uh, thankfully, it's just real quick. Sharkoon rooms make themselves really obvious, and there's honestly only three places in the game Sharkoon gets used, surprisingly. It's kind of a... what's the best to describe it? In Zelda terms, it's kind of like a lens of truth, almost, but they just don't really use it. Okay, so here we are in, like, just before the back half of the items uh, in Bomberman, or in the plasma base for Bomberman. Uh, this room is a very snaky path. It's... there's this block. There we go. Uh, thankfully, it's got two really easy spots to remember where you need to put bombs in order to open up a gate, or where you need to blow up bombs more accurately. Uh, that one, which is just when you're at the top right, and... Going backwards, it's a little harder. I'll check this first, just in the off chance it gives me... Uh... Actually, I have my fusion materials I need for the fourth dungeon. Uh, I think I've had them longer and I just didn't realize it. Oh dear. It's fine. I wasn't going to beat the fourth dungeon anyway. I didn't want to go to the side path to fuse. Here we fuse an Augie and Uni. That gives us Sea Wing. We also got P Beast. Now, if we run down here, when Drago. Okay, so there's one more item in here on the boss. And then going back to this room, it's just... It's in the middle of the se of the snake section, but it's surrounded by blocks, so when you push this block, you throw up. As you can see, there was, the explosion was completely surrounded. It had nowhere to go. So now we push this down. Or push this up. Uh, going over here.
get rid of the card enemy real quick. Okay, there's all of these guys down. Here we switch to uh, the dragon. I'm going to switch back to fire con because it just makes this slightly faster. This one really can't be sped up that much if you do it right. But fire con can blow up the bomb with the best timing you can get. Normally, you would, uh, if you're doing this without Fire Kong, you have to throw a bomb and hold, you want to hold on to it. I mean, you can throw it the moment this guy decides to land. In this case, you can hit him when he's, while he's landing. Hey, you, you blew up my bomb. And then, let's... So yeah, his feet did, doesn't even get to touch the ground if you do it like this. It is... It's faster, but it is really not that much faster. It saves maybe, uh, what, maybe two seconds in total on the fight if you do it perfectly compared to how it tends to go if you don't have Fire Kong. And that's the fight. It's very simple, very much the easiest of the bosses, but at least it has the awesome boss music. Why did that go down? Uh, if anyone has the opportunity to clip the number going down after beating the boss, show me please, because that was weird. Uh, I actually might need that to send to the dev. I think that might have been a bug. Uh, okay. Let's... It's gonna be faster to go backwards, I think. I have Fire Kong. Or the seals can be very uncooperative. That was about the hour nine mark. Okay. Uh, gold armor. Nice. And a heart. Okay, so the last item in this region is by turning in the flower. Uh, we beat the third dungeon. So the fastest way to do that is actually warping to Zeta, which we it's where we're supposed to eventually turn in the... This is where we will eventually turn in the uh, step counter when I feel like it. But first, going over here, we're basically right where you turn in this flower for what I presume is a major item. Uh, if we don't get anything here, or if we don't get anything actually useful here... Comic 1. I'm really confused then. Okay. Um. Huh. I'm gonna go turn in that step counter. And I might be looking at the spoiler for the seed after I finish it, because I want to know what weird logic is making this possible. I... Where did I get that flower? That flower might be in a very particular spot to make this possible. Unfortunately, it was a while ago, but I thought that was in the third dungeon. 
is going to be a very interesting seed to look at logically. But yeah, so we walk all this way, we turn back to this guy with the step counter. He has the ability to get rid of the sandstorm that is blocking his own town. Uh, thank you. Very, very helpful. So there are two more items. There's two items in this town. Uh, one is going to be underground here, which, from the looks of it, is an item, based on what it's saying. Uh, that is... no, this is... this must be tied to the region. That's kind of interesting. That's weird. That the... the house itself isn't, but the... But then this is... air balloon. Okay. Uh, we have to go beat the boss of the fourth dungeon. Uh, in fact, looking at all of the items I found, I can tell you every major item in the dungeon at this point, or every major item we can find, and I would like all of them. Though, I didn't go far enough, uh, though I'm pretty sure there's only one thing the boss can give me here. Uh, this should be giving us our fourth medal when we get back to the dungeon. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a trek to get through, but not that bad. And then after giving us our medal, we get access to Fantasy, the last dungeon. Which I'm... Sometimes it's it's worth considering checking the items in there, just for some useful things. The biggest draw is Fire Kong, just because it's, it is the best item. But it doesn't actually look like there's... Despite the two items that I don't have, other than the metal, being really nice, I don't see a reason to grab them. That was too early. Those were very uncooperative clouds. They can be, even though their pattern is like obviously a uh, very simple, just the fact that they can stay in the air is pretty can be pretty difficult to deal with. I am shocked that it didn't count as hitting me. That was a much cleaner version of that room.
This should be the last bomb for that room. Okay, this room is... This dungeon is honestly kind of flying by with how generally well these rooms are going. Some of them could be better. However, for the most part, these rooms are pretty clean. Coon to go through. And this, most of the time we spent in this room was because we kept having to backtrack. Here. There we go. That room is dealt with. That was me being a little too slow. So now we get to fall in this pit and be right out to the boss. And unlike the other bosses, I am actually not going to put Fire Kong back on after opening the door. Uh, Fire Kong really just isn't needed for this fight. Uh, this fight is... If you don't know what to do, it is one of the more interesting fights, but it has become overall generally uninteresting just because of uh, this is essentially how you do the fight. And you just keep throwing bombs on this line so they constantly are exploding, and the moment uh, the boss becomes vulnerable, they take the damage and just go to shooting some lightning in the air. Uh, there is a chance that that happens where one of the... Uh, one of the, the zombie bombers on the side gets to break free, uh, or gets kind of stuck in the bottom left and is able to actually throw a bomb to threaten you. It's just kind of a bad outcome. There's not really a good way around it. Uh, you can try to move to the side fast enough, but there's going to be a gap, and if you don't time that gap well, the boss can break free. Like, the boss had broken free for a second here. Speaking of which... But there we go. We've got him back in the trap. There we go. Not that bad of a fight. Got a little unlucky with how the bombs uh, ended up in the corners. Or ended up in the bottom row at least, but otherwise got it. There's Elekong, and there's our last metal. That should become zero. Now we have all four medals. Uh, it's time to head to Ida. Time to walk through. We're going to walk through Ida, end up back at Theta, and then we just dig up some dig up some dirt and we'll end up ready to go into the last dungeon. Let's let's see. Uh kind of interesting stats to have. So the amount of bombs, fire, and health is actually... It's not a preset number, it is, it is just the junk fill. And it tries to be a little balanced, but it, it doesn't have, like I said, always fill with 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, so on. So we actually ended up with a little bit of a... A low amount of health. Normally, I tend to see bombs be the lowest number I have. Uh... It's honestly kind of strange seeing my bombs be the highest number. Uh, and it's also not limited to always rolling enough to... How to put this? Uh, it doesn't have a limit on any of the numbers either. So in theory, you could have a seed. And this would be really unlucky, honestly. That is all fire. Or all bombs. As the joke. It basically will never happen. But there is a very, very small chance from my understanding. But yep, we dig up that dirt and place the four metals. Uh, and now we get sent straight up to Fantasy, the last dungeon. Here we have to use Kame King as both a door, a way in, and it also will open the door to the last boss. Uh, so we, we got at the end of that dungeon was Elekong. Elekong uh, is our ability to walk through blocks, like I said. It really... It's just helpful, even compared to uh, 
some of the fire conch stuff, it can save time. It really just depends on if the room is more focused on clearing, or if the focus is on killing. Uh... Also, the major item here is unfortunate. It is P Animal, which is our ability to run. It would be really nice to have, but unfortunately it's... All of the checks in Fantasy are probably too slow to justify going and trying to get him. And here is the room where we kill death three times. We've done it. We've killed death three times. We will not be seeing him again. I could have moved when that hit the left side. Cell blades are actually really dangerous. It is nice that I have all the armor upgrades, but it's still... I need to be a little cautious. I'm also going to be trying to minimize the amount of times I need to menu in here. Uh, while menuing can be fast, uh, obviously if you just, you know, menu too much, it's gonna cost you time. Uh, here we fight things that really just remind me of Daleks. I... They just kind of run around and very much want to exterminate me. Okay, so there's this room cleared out. This is an Elecong room. There's no way around it. There's a lot of blocks that are actually really inconvenient to try to get rid of with Fire Kong. And I'm just going to take the hit does help that I have... having two armor does make the saw blades the... do the least amount of damage. Uh, first I want to place this... I want to get this a balloon. I'm gonna take the hit from these spikes, lose a heart. Going to bait these shots real quick. Uh, I'm gonna take the hit from the saw blade. That ladder accidentally hitting was really bad. Elecong should be 20. Missing animal, it's two inputs between Kong and Sabloon. the health. I'm gonna still try to play it a little bit safe, because, you know, marathon safety and all that. Uh, okay. Of course I get money there to lock up the spot. We'll just run in and take a hit. It's gonna be easier than trying to get these things to cooperate. I don't know what these are supposed to be. There's some weirdly strange enemies in this game. Ooh, more health. Here we step on the switch to open the door, and this room is just a little bit, uh, broken. Normally you're meant to go through and, you know, dodge the saw blade each time to get to the next portal. But if you move back into the portal you came from, it actually warps you, instead of where you came from, uh, to the next portal in the line. I don't know if this was actually a dev intended thing, or if it just was never fixed. Uh, normally I would say it wasn't dev intended, but honestly, there's so much weird decisions with how these rooms are in fantasy that it could be fully dev intended. <laughs> Uh, 
that room could have gone a little better. Though, honestly, it was not a great start. Here, I'm just going to take the hit. It's a bit annoying to just walk all the way up and then back down. Here are some very annoying to deal with bomb enemies that like to... Okay. So here is, in fact, the door before the last boss. We're going to do one safety save, though I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need it here. But you never know. Uh, fortunately, even if I do die, uh, I do have to run back through the entire dungeon again. First, we're going to fight Max. He's a relatively simple fight. Generally, you just get him trapped, or you break his AI because you just have more fire than the game thinks you ever should. You can also just kick bombs and hit down a lane that he's trying to hide behind. You also, of course, can uh, throw a bomb to where he's hiding. You can get him when he's trying to do his own little pathing of bombs and just blowing up early. A lot of good ways to hit him. But now, we fight the actual last boss, Brain Bomber. Uh, this fight, it is... If you have the right tools, this is an extremely easy fight. If you don't have the tools, this can be a very long and difficult fight. Uh... I have the tools, so hopefully he's going to cooperate with me. As long as I keep this rhythm up, he's dead. And that is time. That was a very clean last fight. So that was about 130.54 if I was looking at it correctly. Like I said, very easy fight if you have the tools. If you don't have the tools, it gets very rough. Honestly, I uh, was expecting that fight to not go as cleanly as it did, and I am so glad it went well. Wow, And with GGs. that, we have saved the planet whose name I cannot remember from Brain Bomber and all the other threats. Who needs and plot? That... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a randomizer. Who needs plot? <laughs> we, we did something. We, went, we saved a princess... That... This yeah. game looks like so much fun, honestly. A weird Bomberman Zelda-like. It's just awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is really fun. Uh, my one piece of advice is maybe play the base game before you go into it if you don't know anything. But also, if you play the rando, you're never going to want to play the base game again because <laughs> you start with what is... There is actually a movement speed upgrade, or two of them in the game. And we start the game with both. And the base movement speed in this game is awful. Oh yeah, no, he he it already looked slow and I'm sitting there going, wait, that's that's not the base? Oh. Oh Yeah, no, that is that is after two upgrades. Oh <laughs> Yeah, randomizer uh, or a go right there. <laughs> yeah. There is a third speed one, which is the one item I actually didn't find. Uh but as you saw, it it's a decent enough speed. Yeah. But with the two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let us... Anything else you want to um, add for final thoughts before we wrap this up? Uh, uh, please feel free to check out this rando and check out my Twitch streams. I stream this rando. I stream a lot of OOT now because of multi war tournament. Just check out some stuff. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Daxon, for coming in and doing this. We appreciate you doing the run. We appreciate all the runs you did, and I'm, I'm, I know that you said that you were very happy to be able to come in and just show off this game alone, uh, mm -hmm. especially after like the struggle you had with your combo <laughs> randomizer run. Not your fault. But that was just that was that was quite the run. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a rough seed. <laughs> 
All right, well, um, thank you so much. I'm going to do a quick wrap-up, and then we are going to cut this stream. So Thank you so much for having me on. You're quite welcome. Hopefully we'll see you again next time. All right, everyone. Well, this is... This is a time where we wrap this bonus run up and get ready. There's going to be more bonus adventure coming up later today. We've got Super Mario World and Super Mario RPG uh, starting at 6 o'clock this evening with Sony Rap. Uh, another set of bonus runs. And then on Sunday, it is looking like we are going to have Chrono Trigger Jets of Time doing their run, their hit list co-op with final bosses, seven bosses to kill plus the final bosses. And... Uh, salty run back for that run that didn't quite go well in the marathon but now they're gonna have all the time they need to take care of that so stay tuned tonight and sunday afternoon for another couple of great bonus runs from this marathon and please donate to the uh, charity the bcf the burn children's fund from the south carolina uh, state firefighters helping kids who have suffered burns helping them heal helping them recover helping them feel like kids again from all of us here in the Final Fantasy Randomizer community, I want to thank you for watching, and we will see you all next time.